Hello and welcome to this Beard Clipper video. This is the first in a short series I'm calling Moonstone Mondays. Currently Moonstone has a Kickstarter going and uh, it's awesome. That's a great game I really, really enjoy and I really recommend everyone go and check it out. I'm not affiliated anyway, I want to make that very clear right now. Um, I'm just doing this because I love the game and uh, I'm going to attempt to release a video every Monday for the coming few weeks uh, showcasing some of the miniatures, uh, basically painting them up and getting them onto the table ready. And this week, the first video, I'm going to do this awesome model, which is the Goblin Airship. Now this is probably my favourite model of their entire range and it's one that's been in my stash for quite a long time and I've had a lot of fun. I started painting it up last week and I finished it now, uh, so I'm, this is now Monday morning when I'm recording this, so I'm going to quickly get this video edited up and published um, and next week there'll be another video and I can tell you that I'm doing some of their terrain, so if you're interested in that, watch out for next Monday's video. Anyway, I really hope you enjoyed this. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Let me know if you've played Moonstone, if you're interested. I'll put a link to the Kickstarter as well. Obviously, that will only be really valid for the next few weeks, uh, but I'll put that in the, uh, in the description as well. And uh, yeah, thank you very much for watching. Well, as I start recording this, the new Kickstarter for Moonstone is going to start tomorrow. So what I thought I'd do is to uh, celebrate this because it's a brilliant game. Really enjoyed playing it when I have played it not that I play it often enough unfortunately, was pull out the, my favourite model that I haven't made yet from Moonstone, which is the Goblin Airship. Now this was actually one of the things that I remember seeing this. I remember seeing this before I even knew about the game and think, that's cool, I just want to paint it. And then when I found how good the game was, that was even better. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and paint up the, the Goblin Airship, um, get this assembled and painted, um, and uh, get a, a build video um, done as quick as possible while the campaign is still going on. So uh, yeah, let's have a look inside the box and uh, see whether this is me biting off far more than I can chew. So when you buy your, um, I mean the artwork is awesome isn't it, let's just appreciate that for a second. Yeah, when you buy your Moonstone stuff, you get your card in with the model which is really cool so you don't have to be buying like lots of expansions or what have you books whenever they release new models because their special rules and what have you and the stats all come with the model it's a good way of doing it right let's get into this bag <clears throat> well that was more hassle than i expected it to be all right so what we have is we have some small pieces and we have these bigger pieces which are quite obvious how they go together there might be some cleanup needed yeah there's a little bit of cleanup needed just to take that uh, bit of sprue off the bottom which I can do very easily and then that goes on and that's nice so the key on that if we have a look at this the key on that is actually an odd shape which makes it easy, it means that you're always going to get this put in in exactly the right place and aligned correctly but there's also a little bit of cleanup to do there and then these i would presume are his arms and his uh, fin so what i'm going to do i'm going to get my sharp knife i'm going to clean the uh, that one has a little bit to clean up there and that one has a little bit to clean up there so I'm going to clean these up um, and then I'll bring you along when I've done that and tell you how easy it was and uh, we'll have a look at gluing it together. Um, and then I'm going to have all the fun painting it and I will bring you along for that painting. You might, might do some speeded up painting video, might just do this is what I've just done. But yeah, this is going to be a proper making the Goblin Airship from Moonstone video. So I hope you enjoy. Oh, that was super easy. Took me probably less than five minutes to get all of that done so now i've got my super glue gel and we're going to very carefully glue this in place so put some super glue gel on and then uh, marry the two up and that goes together nicely so i will next stick that on there once the first one has been um, has been secured and then I'm going to have a quick look in this bag and see where these things may go um, and then I will 
I think they actually might go on to the looking at the uh, art. I think they might actually go on onto the bottom of the of the airship part because there's the little goblin. You can see there, a little goblin in there. So yeah, so I'm going to have a quick look at this, um, and when I when this is all dried, and I'm going to start to glue those on, I will uh, I will bring you along. Okay, so I have been staring at the artwork, and what I've noticed is we've got this little thing coming up out here, which is clearly that. Let me get this out of the bag, actually. There, yeah, that makes it really easy to see. So it's clearly that little kind of like bent tube and then we've got a machine gun which is going to be tucked in in front of the uh, little goblin and you can see that right here and he's got a here we are listening tube trumpet thing which is this and if we look here there is a hole in his ear which it will fit in um, and then the last thing is this uh, bit of cloth and that's the only thing that I can't work out where it's going to go right now. So uh, I'm going to go online and see if I can find out. But in the meantime, I'm going to glue these three things. I know where they're going to go. I'm going to stick them in. And the other thing that I'm going to do is to help me when I'm going to be painting, which will not be very long. I should get this primed tonight. Um, we have a clear base. So I will clean off the little bits of sprue and what have you on there, um, get that stuck down to his, or actually probably not get it stuck down, probably just leave it like this, um, because I'm gonna need to do something about that base, because, well, that looks very ugly, so I need to do something about that, don't I? But what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to insert that there, uh, put a bit of super glue in, and then when I'm painting this, I'll have something to hold it by. So I'm gonna do those, three things, not going to film it because it's pretty easy um, and I'll work out where this cloth goes and uh, bring you back once I've got that nailed down. Well, the machine gun was really easy and so was this kind of tubey thing was really easy but sticking the, whatever this is, the sight, kind of like whatever, sight to tube, that was really fiddly and I actually ended up having to get out my super glue activator which I don't like using very much because it just wasn't grabbing at all. However, I have found out where the little bit of uh, cloth goes, this little bit of cloth here. If we very carefully look, lift this up, it actually, if I can get this in shot, it actually goes in under there, very nicely under there. So there's a little bit of cloth already on the, on the, on the piece the main bit and it slots in there so I'm gonna get that glued in now and I found that because I turned over the box <laughs> and on the back it's got a picture of the assembled box assemble airship sorry and you can see there down here is where this bit of cloth is and you can see we've got the gun we've got this tube and we've got the um, let's call it a periscope I don't know what it is but let's call it a periscope <clears throat> anyway I'm gonna glue that on and I'm actually gonna leave that because um, I don't want to ruin my brush when I'm priming it, so I'll prime it in the morning uh, just using grey primer, Vallejo grey primer. Um, but what I am going to do is I'm going to start thinking about the base already because I've just been looking at this clear plastic thing, um, which I might, as I say, glue in just while I'm painting. But if we look at the box art, you can see that, if I zoom that out a little bit actually, one second, you can see that he's flying through a tree. So why can't I make a little wire round tree and mount him in it and that's what I'm going to try and do because yeah that little clear base that doesn't know that doesn't make me very joyful so yeah I'll get this all glued in and then we'll start thinking about the base as I said probably going to do a wire round tree so that it's a bit stronger um, and uh, I'll bring you along for that once I've got that a little bit further along uh, so yeah enjoying this already well that was a bit of a silly mistake <laughs> so I've just realized I got so excited making this that I forgot to come in and clean them on, clean it on the sprue. Which means now I've got to try and clean it without knocking anything off that I've glued on. And uh, wait to prime, which is annoying. So yeah, I started to prime and the paint was just sliding off. And that's what reminded me. So I've got one more to here. 
But it's just some ordinary dish soap or washing up liquid, depending on which side of the Atlantic you are, or depend on what you call it. And an old toothbrush that is no longer in use. <coughs> and what we're doing is we're scrubbing off the, any oil or release agent that is still on there from when they got it out of the out of the uh, mould. And uh, yeah, can't believe I forgot that. I normally always wash everything on the sprue <coughs> before I do anything. But yeah, last night I just got too excited about this. That's my excuse and I'm sticking to it. So I'm going to get this scrubbed well <coughs> and then I'm going to uh, let it to dry, which shouldn't take too long because it's going to be a nice day today. And then I can get it primed. Wahoo! So there we are. The other thing to say is I have glued in the clear butt base. That will get snipped off. That's just going to be used as a handle for painting. Hi, right, so I'm down at the uh, painting bench. I've got a brand new brush, which I'm very excited about. And I'm also just going to reach down and I'm going to be making use of these when I'm painting this awesome model because I want to do a good job. I want to be take my time and really focus in. So I brought down the artwork as you can see and that's what I'm going to be aiming to paint it like. Uh, I don't think I'm going to be able to capture any footage just because I'm not a great painter and I don't stay in shot very easily. But I might try. So if you see some, it means it came out all right. But if you don't, then huge apologies. It just didn't work, particularly because I'll have my my goggles on. And so I won't really be able to pay much attention to uh, the monitor and the camera and what have you. So, yeah, I, I probably would say it's very unlikely that there's going to be any uh, going to be any any um, watching me paint, but I'll give it a go. So, yeah, I will be using Vallejo, that's my main colours, uh, so yeah, mostly Vallejo. Uh, and what I'll probably try and do is, if I don't manage to capture any recording, um, or any active painting, <clears throat> then I'll try to um, report back on what colours I've used, and etc. in case you want to try to reproduce what I do, though that is presupposing it's not rubbish. <laughs> anyway, <clears throat> I'm going to do my best. I love this model, I really want to do it justice, so I really hope that I do manage to do it justice, but we shall see. All I can do is the best I, I can. I can't, I can't do better than my ability. So I'm going to give it a go. Well, the first bit painted. I had a lot of fun doing that. Red leather, just for the kind of like strap going around his head. So what I'm now going to do is put the base coat on for the skin. Uh, and I've decided to go with green gray. I'm not sure if that's going to work or not, but I've decided to give it a go, green gray. Uh, so yeah, I will get that done. I'm going to paint the whole of the skin green grey, even though you can see here in the artwork that his chin is going to go to a more kind of like beige yellow colour. But I think that if I do the whole thing green grey, then I can always pull that highlight in later. So that's what I'm going to do. And that might actually be all I get done this evening. Um, it's uh, taking longer than it normally does because I do have my goggles on. <laughs> And uh, I'm a bit taking a lot of care and paying attention, which I normally don't, and I'll just slap the paint on. But yeah, I'm enjoying it. Let's get back to it. Well, that colour's worked really well. Now, you all saw me washing this miniature, but I've really struggled with retreat and paint, which I always associate with unwashed miniatures. So I think I either just didn't wash it well. I think I definitely didn't wash it well enough, and I definitely should have washed it on the sprue, so I wasn't scared to scrub because that's taken me probably two or three times as long as it should have done and really now I am not going to get any more done this evening. But with a lot of patience and some swearing, uh, I've managed to get a pretty much full coverage. Not as smooth as I wanted, but hey, it looks good from here and if you get right close in you can see some missing bits. But I'm going to let that now. I'm, I'm tired uh, and I'm losing patience, but the uh, green-grey has worked really well as the first base I want. Um, I think I know what I'm going to do next uh, on that, but that's going to be tomorrow. But I'm very pleased with that as a start, having two colours down, the uh, red leather and the green grey. Um, I'll bring you back when I have another look at this tomorrow. Uh, I may not be able to film as much because I'm actually doing a painting session with my mate tomorrow and this might get done. But I'll try to remember and he may let me record little clips, so we shall see. 
Well, we're in a shaky cam this evening, and I was wrong. My painting uh, with my mate is going to be tomorrow, so I have got done this evening to do this. So I've gone in with Japanese World War II camouflage for the yellow, which is okay. I'm not the greatest painter. I might be able to get it to work a bit better with a little bit of uh, more kind of shading going on in the bottom and something lighter at the top, but I'll try and blend that. But yeah, not not doing too well on that. And then I've gone in with some bronze and with some copper on some of the um, areas around the bottom, as you can see. Um, and then I've also painted his little, oh, it's lost its focus, painted his little thing there, silver, or gunmetal actually. So what I'm going to do is have a look at the greens and also try and work a little bit more on the on his chin and potentially do his tongue. Um, I've also, oh yeah, did the eyes as well. So I did that with uh, some uh, blue-grey blue or green-grey, I think it was. Um, and then a little bit of white mixed in to get the, uh, just to kind of like make it a little bit more interesting, a little bit less grey. Um, so yeah, that probably needs some more work as well. I'm not the greatest painter, but I'm having fun. Uh, I'll bring you back at the end of the session and show you how it looks like and tell you what colours I've used. Well, that's been a very enjoyable evening. Uh, I did transparent green as a wash over the top of the uh, main body and it turned out exactly how I was hoping, which was such a nice feeling because with the retreat paint on this, with me not having cleaned it properly, idiot, um, this has really fought back this model, but I'm slowly but surely winning. I'm getting there, I'm getting there, I'm getting there. So there's a fair amount of gunmetal on this. There's some um, glossy black on the gun here. Um, there's purple, just normal purple. I think it might be a royal purple that I've used in various places, including for the eyeballs. And uh, yeah, brass, as I said earlier, and bronze. And um, I think that that might be um, rose red on the tongue, which also didn't go on that well. So I'm gonna have to att attack that again tomorrow. Or maybe on Friday, actually, because I think tomorrow I'm not gonna paint this one. But yeah, I'm getting close. I reckon one more evening, one more good evening at this, um, and I'll be I'll be done. And uh, well, I'll be done the painting, because then we're going to come onto the basing, which has been progressing in my mind. I've been thinking a lot, and I've made some plans. Uh, but I'll show you what that looks like after I finish painting, because then I'll be looking at the basing. Yeah, pretty happy. I think it looks great. And uh, with another evening, I think it'll look perfect and done. So now to basing, and. Uh, I realized I had this cool stick. Now I'd initially thought I might turn it into a wizard staff, but I'm not sure when I'll ever do that. And it's probably not the right size anyway for any of the scales that I work with. And the top of it is perfect for mounting the uh, uh, Goblin Airship too. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this uh, saw here, um, mainly because it's night now, I, didn't, I was supposed to do this during the day, I didn't get time, I had a really busy fun day with Rosie. So I'm just going to take this razor saw and uh, look to cut this around here. Now I'm deliberately cutting it maybe a bit long because I can trim it down, but I want to see what it looks like when it's on the base. So uh, yeah, I'll get this cut which won't take very long, these razor saws really are very good. So cutting lots of different type of wood, a lot of material, including wood. So there we are, I've cut that. So what I'm gonna do now, offer that up to the base and grab the airship as well. Need to snip that clear base off. But the concept will be, if I can show, I was having a look at this earlier, that basically, basically her, huh, should be able to like support it quite nicely on one of these little outcroppings. But I'm gonna to need to get rid of that first. So I'm gonna go get my snips, clip, clip that off, and then we'll work out roughly where we're gonna sit it, see whether it's going to be uh, tall enough, whether it's gonna to be too tall, sorry, which I think it might be. I might trim it down another inch or two, inch or so, inch and a half, maybe up to about there. And I'm gonna bring you back when I've done those things and when I'm ready to start gluing this to the base. All right, so I've trimmed that down and I've worked out a way that it's gonna, um, that the actual Airship's going to attach. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start gluing this, fixing this to the base. So my plan is <clears throat> to use my grabber glue at first. So I put a, a dollop of grabber glue down here. And then, <clears throat> excuse me, I've got a bit of a frog in my throat. And then when that's stuck and set, 
then I will make use of some um, milliput or green stuff and go around with the whole of it and then I'll paint all of it black so I just have a black base so I'm going to leave that well alone now just make sure that that's the correct angle I think it is yep going to leave that well alone now so that it holds it grabs it in place and then when it's set like I say I'll come in with some milliput and then so it's going to take a couple of days to do this just because of drying times but that should then be secure and then I can stick the actual um, <coughs> airship in place so I need to put the airship somewhere safe so it doesn't get damaged move that somewhere safe so it doesn't get knocked and just wait okay so that's dried nice and securely and I've just mixed up some milliput and what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in as I said and just fill in all around fill in the hollow and just add it as a little bit of extra support and structure around this bit of wood and then when that's dried oh yeah that didn't take long when that's dried I will then come along mask off the tree but I might paint the tree black as well actually I'm looking at the artwork the tree is black need a bit of water need to keep your your fingers wet when you're doing this otherwise it just goes powdery anyway yeah so that's that so that will now go off relatively quickly and then i'll decide what painting i'm going to do um, at the most at the very least it will just be painting the bottom black at the most i might paint the whole thing black um, because looking at the artwork pull that over it's a very dark tree with little bits of green so I might, I might actually do a little bit more to it yeah maybe I'll do a little bit more painting but anyway I need that to dry anyway now I need that to go off so I'll leave that to go off and I'll bring you back when I get to the next step well I've uh, primed this all black base and I decided to go for the tree as well and what I'm going to do now is going to make use of not that one flat brown and I'm going to paint that on the tree and then I'll start to add different colours and some greens on top like you saw on the uh, on the box art <coughs> and uh, and then I'll be able to glue the uh, glue the airship in place and it'll be done now I'm in a bit of a rush for this because I'd really like to get this done uh, tonight so that I can publish this video tomorrow um, I'm trying to gonna try and do uh, Moonstone Mondays for a little bit particularly while the Kickstarter is going on to maybe get some people who haven't seen some of their miniatures or don't know the game to uh, to, to go and jump onto the Kickstarter and get involved. Uh, I hasten to add I'm in no way supported by them. Uh, I didn't ask for anything and they didn't send me anything um, and I won't. Um, that's uh, This is just doing it because I really like it and I love the miniatures. So I don't think this is in any way sponsored. It really isn't. Um, they did send me uh, one in the last Kickstarter um, which was obviously I was up front about but I haven't asked or received anything for this Kickstarter. I've obviously not been involved enough in the intervening months, but maybe uh, I'll stick it at this time. Anyway, enough nattering, enough rambling. Let's get some brown paint on this, and then uh, and then we'll start to build up some colours. Well, no matter how I try and film this, it doesn't come out very well down here. But I'm really happy with that. So basically what I've done is I did the uh, flat brown and then I went for German camouflage dark brown and wet blended that in. And then I wet blended some uh, transparent green over the top. And I really wish I could show it off. I'm going to have to wait for the pictures to show it off properly, but I'm very, very pleased. So I'm going to let that dry and then we will um, we'll glue the uh, airship on and then I'll get some pictures and you'll be able to actually see what it looks like. Oh, there we are. Done. And the interesting thing is, is that it actually sat on the base on that twig without gluing it but I have glued it obviously but yeah I was able to balance on there which is pretty cool so I am really happy with that that really works well if we just pull the um, box art in if it will stay up yep just about you can see what I was going for and hopefully <clears throat> you can agree that I've actually managed to achieve it relatively well so pretty happy with that and what a fun build that was uh, fun to paint apart from the retreating uh, paint problem but that was caused by me forgetting to wash the sprues so absolute top tip any moonstone miniature get them a good scrub because I can tell you that the Bumbletown farm which I'm working on now I gave a good scrub really hot water scrubbed everything really really fully and it's primed up perfectly with no retreating and it'll paint much quicker and easier so yeah top tip but yeah there we are I hope you've um, enjoyed watching that I um, hope that maybe has inspired you for basing some of these miniatures and uh, going away and uh, looking at the Moonstone. It's a great game.
Well, there we are. Moonstone really does have some of the most fantastic miniatures, if not the most brilliant miniatures for any game, I think. They're just so unique, creative, they're great fun to paint, um, and yeah, really, really cool. So uh, I very much enjoyed putting this together. It's been on my want to do for a long time, and getting the reason to do it has been brilliant, and getting it done in just a few days is also really cool. So I hope that you've enjoyed this video, maybe inspired you to go and check out the Kickstarter. If it has, let me know. Go and check out the game. It's really, really cool. Good fun game as well as just the miniatures are awesome. And uh, yeah, let me know in the comments below what you think. So I'll wrap up by saying, as I always do to everyone out there, please do stay healthy, stay safe and stay well.